What is going on, guys? Welcome to Gregel's TV Daily Rewind. It's where we go back a week and give you all of your tech news stories from the past seven days in one single video. Uh, and the week, this week we talked a lot about the Galaxy Z Fold 4. We talked about potential galaxies, like the Galaxy Z Fold 4 going to be a Galaxy Z Fold 3S edition, like not a huge upgrade. Or uh, we also talk about the upgrades for that new phone. We talk about the Pixel Watch and the Galaxy Watch and the new Apple Watch coming out. So Watch this week, hope you enjoy it, and we'll see you in the next one. First story of the day is about the Galaxy S22 phones. The May update, that's right, we're not even in May, and the May update is already starting to roll out right now. It's about a 600 meg update, and I know it's out in India, or it's rolling out in India currently. I checked my Galaxy S22 Ultra phone. I don't personally have it, and I know it's rolling out in India, and it's for the folks with the Snapdragon variant of it. So it looks like that phone potentially get it first. So keep your eyes peeled for the update. We don't fully know everything that's in the update. It's probably just bug fixes and things like that and security update, but it is rolling out. Next up is about a story we talked about yesterday with the Pixel Watch. Now, Pixel Watch got leaked over the weekend. We know what, obviously, a, we saw like a real life image of it. And now we have a little bit more of a background story, which is kind of cool. So I thought we'd kind of dive into that because the guy put a post on Reddit talking about kind of how he came into contact with the watch and all that. So basically he said, my buddy is the one that found the watch. He's a bartender at a restaurant. It was left at, they held it for a few weeks, expecting the person that left it to return, but they never had happen. He gave it to me because I'm the tech nerd, so he let me deal with it. The reason the bands aren't attachable in any photos is simple. My buddy forgot to give them to me with the watch. They were packaged separately and he forgot to bring them over, so he sent the pictures of them for the article. Notice the background is different. I'd, I'll get them from him at some point and post an image as the whole package. No charger was left and the battery is dead. The image with the G boot logo was taken by my buddy the day he found it. It had a small amount of charge at that point, but only booted to that screen. Guessing there isn't a full OS loaded. No, I don't work for Google or any subsidiaries and nobody is paying me free to do this. Google, if you're reading this, I have a wedding coming up and a very large guest list feel free to listen to the masses and drop some of those alphabet moolah on me and ultimately one of the cool things he does show is a picture of the watch next to an iphone watch which is the 40 millimeter and a 46 millimeter galaxy watch so it looks when you and then when you look at the pixel watch in the middle there the pixel watch to me looks like something that it's closer to in size anyway the display to that 46 millimeter galaxy watch it just looks a lot less chunky without the whole rotating bezel on top so if you don't love the rotating bezel you can potentially get soon probably an android watch a google watch that is a little bit more slim but still has that nice big display so uh april 26th was the launch of this phone you guys might not even know it the poco f4 gt this is a crazy phone in terms of specs i think it's like six or seven hundred euros depending upon which version you get and the specs are freaking crazy i'll put out a video about this most likely tomorrow but it is like a spec heaven for a price that is incredible um Snapdragon HN1, that's all I really need to say, so you know you're getting a premium phone. With that said though, we got a bunch of questions, so let's just dive into those questions. But, all right, first question of the day comes from Huggle. 012. Hey Gregles, I was wondering what kind of battery life do you get since the April update on your full three because I have messed with some settings and I get about six hours of screen on time and high uh, refresh in eight on low, maybe that can help. Um, I, I, don't, I haven't looked at the exact timing that I get, but it doesn't last very long. So basically, if, I, if I'm fully charged when I take it off the charger, sometimes I'll wake up usually between 5 and 6 a.m. I go for a walk. By noon, I have to charge it up again, usually. Um, sometimes a little bit earlier, maybe a little bit later, but I have to start charging it because it's getting low in there. Um, but yeah, it's pretty bad. So. I, but I usually don't look at how much screen on time I get, but I guess probably three to four hours. Clark Little says, is there a photo review for the S22 Ultra as I am, as I cannot find it? Thanks. Photo preview. Is there a photo preview? I don't know what you mean by that. Do you mean like people just taking photos and showing that off? There probably is, I, but I don't, I'm not too sure of what you mean, Clark. So if you could write me a brand new comment and, and just be specific exactly what you're looking for by photo preview. 
so I can help answer it because otherwise I'm a little bit confused by your question. Lugia Darrell says, I have a question on my S22 Ultra, the Snapdragon variant. How come every time I take it off the charger and it's 100%, but it's in standby mode like the screen is off, how come it drops to 99%? after five minutes of standby time. Are they going to fix this and update or is this a battery issue? Yeah, that's completely normal. It happens all the time. I'll notice, I'll take it off and I'm, I literally have had the phone off for a few minutes. I'm like already down to 94% battery and it's happened to me on basically every Samsung phone. With an iPhone, you'll be stuck at 100% a lot of time for like a really, really long time. Um, but Samsung phones, not so much. They just kind of drain in that way, especially initially pretty quick. And the last question from James Baker, do you have a delivery date on your Vivo X Fold yet? Looking forward to an unboxing and walkthrough. I actually contacted them today. It still hasn't shipped. They said it will ship before the end of April. So we're coming at the end of the April here. We got it's Tuesday, April 26th, 27, 28, 29. But we got four more days for this thing to ship today, tomorrow, when Thursday and Friday, sometime in there, and then you, it says it's gonna take eight to 15 days once it ships, because I paid for the upgrade shipping. So hopefully I'll have it pretty soon. But, and then I'll get you guys some video content on that as well. So story of the day is again about the Pixel Watch. The rumors are getting hot and heavy about this, which means it's probably gonna come out very, very soon, or at least fairly soon at that. You would definitely think this year, because the rumors are getting really in depth with information that's starting to leak out and we know what it looks like we've seen real pictures of it and here's some more details that are being leaked out this tweet is coming from mr yogesh brar who says get some got some info on the pixel watch from a relatively new source number one google samsung partnership is here on the watch as well. So we should see some kind of partnership thing going on with the watch between Google and Samsung. Same sensors as the Galaxy Watch, ECG and more. The new Wear OS 3.1 will be on the Pixel Watch. Two sizes, at least four color watch bands as well. And limited release, and it'll be priced between $300 and $400. So a couple of key takeaways from there. Obviously, seemingly it'll probably have all the same features that the Galaxy Watch has, maybe obviously not the rotating bezel, but the things that are baked into the actual hardware, it seems like they will be there. The price, 300 to 400 bucks, kind of competitive with the market overall. Two sizes, again, competitive with the market overall. Usually you see a smaller size that generally women will go for, or kids, uh, and then you've got a larger size usually men go for, and then you also have the color watch bands, which you'll probably also be able to buy watch bands outside of that realm, I'd assume, in there. And release date, obviously we don't fully know, but it's it could be October. Maybe it'll be August or, or June, like we've heard, or something like that. So we'll wait and see, but more and more stuff is coming out this, so be sure to be with the channel because we will definitely talk about the Pixel Watch. Next up is an amazing deal going on right now for the Galaxy Z Fold 3. Now the Galaxy Z Fold 3 will be replaced in August most likely with the Galaxy Z Fold 4. I made a video recently saying, you know what, I might not probably buy it, but if you need a phone right now or you want a really, really good deal, you might want to buy it right now <clears throat> because there's an amazing deal going on right now for this phone on Samsung's website. Check this out. So you're gonna get all of this. So you get the Galaxy Z Fold 3, obviously, and you get it with a huge deal. You can see the top here uh, in the writing. You're gonna end up getting a $300 off on the phone itself, just straight off the bat. That's before you do any trade-in. So $300 off. You also get a Galaxy Watch 4 for free, and you get a $100 Google Play promotional balance and that again you, and you can still trade in your old phone that you have and reduce the price even further so some really nice deals going on for this phone if you get it right now and you're like hey i want to get the galaxy z fold 4 it wouldn't be that it wouldn't be not that smart to do it if that makes sense like because you you're, when you trade this phone in if you get the z fold 4 and you bought this phone now the difference is going to be very minimal like you should still get i would guess eight to $900 trade in for the Galaxy Z Fold 3. When you get the Galaxy Z Fold 4, biting into that price of the Z Fold 4 so you don't have to pay as much, and then you'll get the free gifts with it and everything else that they, they allow you to get as well. So if you're thinking about getting the Z Fold 3, this is a great deal to get. Money off, free watch, you could trade it, sell it or keep it. Um, you get the free promotional balance on Google Play so you can get apps and games for you and yourself or your kids. Um, so. 
Check into it, guys. It's linked down below. First story of the day has to do with the Nothing phone because they just launched the Nothing launcher and it's really easy to download. I have it linked down below in the show notes. So check those out in the description. Here it is. I installed it on my Galaxy S22 Ultra. You can install it on some phones. I know like the Pixel phones, some of the Galaxy S phones. You can't put it on the, the Z Fold line or maybe you can back. I don't know. You can't do it off the Google Play Store, but on the Google Play Store, you just download it and uh, it's pretty no frills. Uh, I put some of the uh, widgets that come with it, such as the clock and the and the um, the weather, and you swipe up and down. It's black and white. Again, it's pretty no frills. There's no Google part over to the side of the Google feed. Um, if you want to make your icons bigger, you press and hold on them. Uh, let's just go here, press and hold, and then you get a. Uh, it's not showing right there. Let me see. There we go. You can click that. I can't do it because it's my things there, but you can make them bigger and smaller that way by pressing and holding on them. So kind of no frills, but if you wanted to try it, I have it linked it down below. And just a little bit of further information, Nothing Company is, they already have earphones out. They're coming out with a phone and they were started by Carl Pai who helped start OnePlus and blah, 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 blah. So just keep your eye on them. They will have a new phone coming out. I think this year, I believe it's this year. Next up is about the Galaxy folding phones that are gonna be coming out because Samsung has officially confirmed them because they talked about their sales thus far this year and they're really, really good. And they also talked about this. As you can see from the headline, Samsung has confirmed new foldable smartphones are coming. And this is coming from the VP of Samsung's mobile business, King, Kim Sung Koo, hinted at the upcoming foldable smartphones. We are currently all hands on deck regarding preparing the new foldable model scheduled for launch in the second half. He also went on to say that Samsung is looking to make foldable smartphones a main column next to the Galaxy S series with our business. And I've said this and I continue to say this, these will be, and I, I really think so, I think these phones will take over in sales within the next five years, regular candy bar phones. Now, I don't think it will happen until Apple officially does it because Apple, especially here in America, is really, really a catalyst for, they might not come out with the technology first, but they really push it and things change once they do it. So I really think at that point, once Apple does it, which the rumored times are 2024-ish, that they would come out with their foldable phones, that's when you will see mass appeal come to these phones. Samsung's in the right direction. I love what Samsung's doing. I love what Huawei's doing. I love what Oppo's doing. I love what everybody's doing with it. Don't get me wrong, but the mass appeal factor will not happen until Apple, 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 Apple officially does it. And I, and I can't wait because it's the most exciting part of smartphones in my my in my my, my head. And then um, I don't know. There's just so much they can do with it. So that's why it's so interesting. Now speaking of the Galaxy Z Fold 4 and Z Flip 4, we've heard mostly some good things, especially lately, about the Galaxy Z Fold 4. And I personally, before I even get into this news story, I personally personally think it'll be a pretty good upgrade. Now, there won't be S Pen support, but beyond that, I still think there will be enough here to warrant an upgrade, especially if you're a user daily of this phone because you know of its shortcomings. Or if you're waiting, if you should get the Fold 3 or Fold 4, I think it'll be a reason to wait for the Fold 4. But with that said, let's get into this tweet from Chun. Now, Chun is saying that the Galaxy Z Folds, the Flip and the Fold, in 2022, in a nutshell, are basically S versions of the Z 2021 versions of the phone, AKA Z Fold 4 is more like a Z Fold 3S and the Z Flip 4 is more like a Z Flip 3S. Now he's getting those names from iPhones. iPhone in the past, they'd go like iPhone 5 and then iPhone 5S, so it was like a minimal upgrade. So that's what he's saying. It's probably gonna be a minimal upgrade. And there are also some questions down below. Alex asked any word on better under display camera. He said two to three times better than current under display to camera although I wouldn't recommend you trust that number though, just to be honest. Uh, so they don't change much was asked by uh, Raynell. And again, Chun said, nope, especially the flip four. So again, it all goes back to what should we expect? I, I, I stand by what I said in the beginning of this, where I said the Z Fold 4, I think will be a pretty good upgrade enough to want to make most people upgrade or want to get that phone over the Z Fold 3. Now the Z Flip 4, 
versus the Z Flip 3. That's what I've heard too, is that it's not a huge upgrade. Now, it doesn't mean nothing's gonna be upgrade. It just means I think like the majority of things that people might wanna change or improve might not come to that phone. But you can also expect that that phone might be even cheaper than it was last year. And it, blew, it started off at $999 last year. So if they can get that even lower, that's going to bring more people into that camp, getting used to the flips and the folding phone. So it's, I think it's gravy at the end of the day because most people don't even need the best of the best of the best. Do they want the best? Yes. Do they need it? Probably not. But it's always good to see progression in specs and performance and quality of features and hopefully they still bring that to the z flip 4. first story of the day is about and both of them really are are about the galaxy z fold 4. now galaxy z fold 4 we've heard information coming out trickling through stuff that's coming through the floodgates and some of the information we've heard and from a very reliable source is mr ross young now on april 20th he said the following this was a, a tweet that he put out. The tweet says, Samsung's Galaxy Z Fold 4 and Z Flip 4 phone production for July are more than double what it is for the Z Fold 3 and Z Flip 3, pointing to a very strong launch, might see a price cut. Now, to dive deeper into that, someone had asked him a question yesterday. One of the questions was about the under panel camera, uh, and Ross, basically, is it gonna be better? And he said, yes, it isn't clear if the under panel camera performance will be good enough and manufacturable enough by then for those kinds of volumes. So we might, he's basically what he's saying is, we might, we might not see a new under panel camera. I think we're going to. I'd be highly shocked if they use the same exact one or at least not make it better. Now, but the one thing your guys are coming here is, uh, Tejas Sethi says, is there a chance that Samsung will increase the size of the back screen of the Z Flip 4? And uh, will what will be expected the launch day of it? Now you can add in, Z Fold 4, because Z Flip 4 and Fold 4 get released at the same time. But basically, he's saying August as usual. So August release date for the Z Flip 4 and Z Fold 4, and you may see a slight increase. So that's, he's talking about the Z Flip 4 in that last part. So, and we've, and that's not a shock to you guys. It shouldn't be. Uh, the Z Flip line and Z Fold line are generally released in August, and it seems like everything is staying on schedule at this point. You start all your production a month or two ahead of time, and then within that time frame, you get the phone released. So it's looking like August, when in August, you might say, most likely towards the end of August, I would guess somewhere in the 20s, August like 20, it's, and it's usually on a Friday. You know what, let me look at my calendar. My guess is either August 19th or August 26th. I'm gonna go with August 26th though, because they usually do it in the 20s, I feel like, and then if you get it on the 26th, usually people get it a few days before, so you're probably looking at people getting their phones anywhere between August 22nd and 26th with pre-order, so looking like my guess anyway on the, on the exact date, but August definitely for the release date. This question comes from Just Amateur Tech, also known as Phil P.J. Davis, also aware who at one time, and may still be, I thought my biggest fan. Yeah, but I guess not. He's not watching all my videos, or at least he doesn't remember. I, I kid, Phil. So anyway, he's asking, and I already responded to him, but maybe you guys want to know too. Anybody got the number for the Samsung Care Plus? And I don't remember, but I'm going to pull up my video because I did a video on how to cancel Samsung Care Plus, and it's the same phone number. So it's 866 371 9501. You can call that number get in contact with Samsung Care Plus. Next comes from Tevin C. Do you think the reason for the Z Fold 3 main screen failure, he's talking about, my, I guess my wife's I think, is due to the Samsung reducing the gap when closed or is it the thicker screen protector in the crease? Now he could be talking about mine. So I did a video yesterday where I talked about we returned my wife's phone and my phone. My phone has the stretch marks in the middle of the crease but it's still t completely usable. Uh, no real problem beyond that. Just, I, I was worried about the trade-in values when I, in a few months. And then as for my wife's phone, she actually had a black line running through it and then another line running this way. So um, the cause of it, I, I, I would guess it's just some kind of loose wiring inside. Maybe the phone fell off the bed one night uh, and it loosened one of those wires. Uh, it's something like that along those lines. I, I can't imagine it's anything like some kind of something going through the back of the phone through the gap or anything. It could be 
I don't know though. It's okay. If anybody thinks they know, let us know in the comments below. Phil PJ Dev is back for some more pain saying, do you think the Fold 4 will have the 1750 nits brightness screen like the S22 series? No, but I will say I do trust and believe another one of the key features of the Z Fold 4 versus the Z Fold 3 will be a brighter display. Now, how much brighter? I think, I don't think it'll come super close, and I, how do I, I don't, I really don't know, but I'm just guessing. I don't think it'll come super close to the S22 Ultra, but I do think it will come close. Like if that's 1750, I think it'll get to 1000 to 1200. I think it will get into that range. I think it'll be brighter than what you get with an iPhone, uh, but not as bright as something that you get with an S22 Ultra. I think it'll be somewhere in the middle there. Um, maybe 1200 nits brightness, maybe a little bit lower, but definitely not 1750. First story of the day has to do with the Samsung Galaxy Watch that's coming out, the Watch 5, and also, the iPhone watch that's gonna be coming out. So we wanna talk about both of those devices. And this information is coming from Ming Chi Ku, who's a analyst. And he always gives you a lot of Apple information. So let's talk, and, but he also gives them some Samsung information saying that Apple has canceled the body temperature measurement for the Apple Watch 7 because the algorithm failed to qualify before entering EVT stage last year. I believe Apple Watch 8 and 20, second half of 2022 could take temperature if the algorithm can meet Apple's high standards before mass production. Now, before I go into that second one, he's just talking about the watch, you'll be able to check your temperature. Like, are you, are you sick? Are you not? Like that kind of temperature. He also goes on to say the challenge is impl implementing precise body temperature measurement is that skin temperature quickly varies depending on outside environments. A smartwatch can support core temperature measurement in terms of hardware, so it needs excellent algorithm to work together. And then his Samsung comment is Samsung is facing this challenge as well. Unlike previous media reports, I think Samsung Galaxy Watch 5 in the second half of 2022 might not support the body temperature measurement due to algorithm limitations. So that being a feature of being able to check your temperature, uh, is amazing it's so cool it's it's definitely something that's needed in a smartwatch and makes the smartwatch more valuable now is it going to be there it's sounding like what he's saying he doesn't believe it's going to be like i i, I think if samsung's not going to have it i don't even think apple will have it just yet but who knows sometimes apple will come out in the future and then samsung does later on but if the apple watch has it and the samsung one doesn't I don't know, that's kind of a big thing. I mean, especially if you're deciding between the two watches and those two platforms, I would choose the one that had it. I, th I would think that's actually kind of cool to have that. That's something I would kind of find valuable to have in a watch. And hopefully it does make its way to both watches. Hopefully it works well in both watches because I personally find it to be a killer feature. Now we always talk about the Galaxy Z Fold 4 and Z Flip 4 on a quite regular basis over the last few weeks. This time we have a list anyway of the improvements that are coming to basically both of the phones for the most part. Some of this is speculation, but ultimately we've heard things, and most of them positive, about what to expect with those phones. So we've got a nice little list created by the Galox. So we'll go through that list and talk about these and kind of rate them on how how likely they are to happen. So, and I, I'll be honest with you, I don't really care about the Z Flip 4. Z Flip 4 sells more. Z Fold 4 is more exciting towards me, but all these improvements are really to do with basically both the phones for the most part. So, better ultra thin glass. We've heard that. I think it's quite likely to have better ultra thin glass, more reliable, lighter, maybe skinnier. Uh, thinner and lighter for the body, we've heard that. I believe that to be true. I think that will come true. A new hinge, so the hinge would be I guess, lighter, smaller, maybe single hinged, but overall just a better hinge overall in terms of the way it's made and the durability and the weight of it. Processor and cooling, very likely. That's uh, So far we're four for four of having these, so it obviously we'll have a newer processor. Cooling, it seems to always be improved year over year, or at least they say it does. Cameras, that is a huge thing. This is rumored to have Galaxy S22 Ultra type cameras at the very least S22, S22 plus, but lately we've been hearing S22 Ultra type cameras on the front and the back of these phones. Durability, we've kind of spoken about it, but yes, it's supposed to be more durable now in the Galaxy Z Fold 4. And then some small improvements are battery life. Battery life, potentially 100 more milliamps, especially on the Z Flip 4. Z Fold 4, 
maybe not, might be exactly the same as what we get with the Z Fold 3. Display aspect ratio, there's been rumors, we've seen you know some sketches basically that it might be a little bit more squared off or a little bit shorter and fatter per se with this phone versus last year's phone or the new phone that's coming out. So that would make the front display bigger and this be a little bit wider so it might work better with and be more, be more usable. The design, we haven't really heard, heard too much about that. I don't think that that's something that's gonna change all that much. Maybe on the Z Flip 4 a little bit in terms of the way the displays look, but I guess you could throw that into the aspect ratio with the design for the Z Flip 4 as well. S Pen, there's rumored to be no S Pen inside the Z Fold 4 currently at the latest rumor. So I wouldn't say that's gonna be an improvement. I would expect it to be the exact same kind of S Pen as last year, maybe a little smaller. Charging speeds, we haven't heard anything about that, but I would expect that to change. Currently, it's 25 watts and 15 watts on the Flip 3 and Fold 4, it's 25 watts. Fold 4, I believe, will get 45 watt, and I believe 25 watt will come to the Flip 4. And those are basically the improvements that we're looking at for that phone. So your question of the day is, what's the most exciting improvement coming to the phone? Um, I've kind of said it before. For me, it's probably gonna be the cameras but let me know about you guys in the comments down below. With that said, let's jump into the Q&A portion of the video and drop that I am really sorry if my voice is really hoarse right now. I don't have water next to me and it is literally 5.07 in the morning. It's really early. Um, first question comes from Tim Hunton and I have a cold. On my S22 Ultra in settings under display, it has Screen resolution, where is it on the Z Fold 3? It does not show up. It doesn't have it on the Z Fold 3. Why? Probably because the screen is a little bit bigger and they treat it like a tablet. The tablets, you can't lower the resolution either. So it's you're not missing anything with the Z Fold 3. It's just not there. No one has it. Zach asks, how much will the Z Fold 4 be? Uh, we would be better than the 3 Fold 3. I don't know what you mean by that. So the price of it, I believe, um, I'd like to see it at 1500 It's not going to be that. It sounds like it's going to be $1,699 or $1,799 for starting prices. Rena and Delion says, next month I'm going to buy the S22 Ultra. Do you recommend to me to buy it from my carrier, which is T-Mobile or Best Buy? I mean, whoever gives you the best deal is what I would say. I, I don't know what their current deals are in both carriers or both stores. Um, you might even want to look at Samsung. Samsung Bliss sells a T-Mobile version as well. You might even be able to get a good deal through them with freebies. So look at Samsung.com as well. <clears throat> Jessica says, I have the Liberty 3 Pro earbuds. I could control the volume on the earbuds and also separately on the phone itself. Making the buds much louder, but it won't work. I turn volume up and the buds, it goes up on my phone. They're no longer separate. I have absolute volume disabled. What could cause the problem? I have reset the buds and still not working right. Tra well, if you've already reset them, that means you had to reconnect them. So I was gonna say disconnect them and reconnect them. Maybe it's a bug or, I can't, doesn't that phone, doesn't that, don't those have a, don't, doesn't those buds have an app? If they do, I download the app and see if you can notice any settings in there. Otherwise, I'm not too sure. I'd have to fiddle with it myself. And our last question from Goon Squad, do you use beta on your iPhone 13 Pro Max? No, I don't use any beta software on my iPhone 13 Pro Max. Thanks for your questions. If you have a question, leave it in the comments down below with the word question, and we'll see you down the road.